Hey, Woodstock. What do you think? Wrong reaction, because you know it's incredible. Hey, what's up you guys? Chris at Team Aquascape here this morning, bright and early. Today we are gonna blow this area behind me up and rebuild it. Boom. We are going to completely redo this space in through here. We're gonna add the stack slate spheres as a little collection over here, and we're actually gonna move these spillway bowls and put them up over here. The basalt rocks are gonna go on the other side of our retail store. First thing to do, get everything demoed. We're gonna probably have to put a new reservoir in underneath this whole thing, but we'll see. So I'll show you that when we get there. I just looked at my phone and look at this. You see that? Negative three, it is negative three outside. First thing we always do when working in the retail store is we're gonna get down this, this underlayment to protect our carpet. I see we've already got the first track laid. What's up gentlemen? How's it going? Nicholas, nice babushka you got there. It's a nice hat, you know? That's cute. We'll first get all this cleaned up, and then construction. Booyah. Okay, so we have excavation, we have exclamation, dehydration, constipation, flotation, Demolition almost all the way complete. We did find the source of the leak. So our leak was around the spillway bowls. Our liner stops here and when the guys installed it, we had a bib liner going back underneath, or I guess that top spillway bowl. And what was happening is the two bowls were touching. Water was traveling back down the face of that bowl, hitting that bib liner, and then migrating this way. Little tip for you guys that are doing the spillway bowls, don't let the two of them touch. And if they are, make sure that the entirety of the bowl and the feature is on top of liner. How do you feel about that plan, Nick? That's a good plan. Man, your hair looks sweet. You look like an elf. We just completed a pretty big step. Unfortunately, we thought we were gonna get away with seaming, extra piece of liner onto this, but in order to make it bomb proof and just make sure that everything's gonna be working properly this time, we're just gonna tear everything out like we did and put in a new liner. We finally got the old liner out and we're gonna do a quick run through and, and kind of see what we got going on for the rest of the project here. So the guys are well into it. So let's just see how far along they are. Fabric's going in. You can see everything's been torn out. And so obviously when we're doing indoor displays, the biggest obstacle we have is that floor, the concrete. Because <laughs> we can't really dig. So everything has to be built up. So you can see this wall here is the height a little bit higher than our half aqua blocks, which are nine and a half inches. I would assume they'll double this up just to make it bomb proof. And then our aqua blocks will go in a lot like if we were to tackle a job outside. You know, we talked to customers about adding on, if we want to put 100% guarantee on it, the only way to do that is rip the whole thing out. We don't want to put band-aids on a bunch of stuff and then find out that it still leaks. So Chris made the right decision, just rip the whole thing out. Liner's not terribly expensive when we're looking at the cost of product. The most expensive part is the labor. And because 80% of it had already been demoed, why not just rip it out and put a new liner in? So let me show you guys the liner going in. Nick, any big obstacles with uh, the demo? Oh, you're not Nick. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. So you can see we've started uh, doing the retaining wall. This is actually inside the liner, guys. And this is going inside the liner. And the reason we're doing that, we're gonna need a lot of real estate, especially over in this area in through here for the stack slate spheres. So we're, we're one big continuous piece of liner here. We wanna make sure this thing is 100% is leak proof. I hope that makes sense. If you guys have any questions, feel free to show it down in the comments and we'll be, we'll be able to get back to you, okay? This is where the spillway bowls are gonna go. It'd be nice if we set this spillway bowl here mm -hmm. at a height that also helps hide 
<laughs> Approximately 10 hours later. I think the coolest part with these projects, whether it's indoors or outdoors, a very organic process. So yes, we knew we wanted bowls there. Yes, we know we want some of the stacked spheres over there, but we're changing and adapting as we go. If you try to go on too much of a set vision, it'll look really, really forced every time. So always allow your vision to kind of adapt with the area. I'm super excited about seeing the way this comes out. trick from the hardscape industry. I just want to make a cardboard template. Because basically what we're going to do is we're going to bring cut brick all the way up underneath this bowl to make it look like this bowl has been carved into this wall. It's so hard to cut this shape, right? If you're just kind of guessing at it. And I get something that's long enough to reach all the way under this bowl. And then I just kind of keep it at the same level. Should have a pretty close shape of what that bowl is. I'll cut this section out and then I'll have a cut line for all my bricks going up from there. Tip of the day. So I just want to cut away from the construction process of, of this video and really kind of dive into how we're going to plumb these spillway bowls. We're actually only going to have water running into one of them from the pump. Two spillway bowls here, they look identical, but this actually happens to be an older model. You can see that that's a three quarter inch hole right there. So the old ones used to come with a three quarter inch female adapter plumbed into the end. So you would just screw in your three quarter MPT and plumb it that way. The new ones, actually come a little bit differently. So we had some requests of guys wanting to plumb more water up through these. So now they come with an inch and a half by three quarter bushing. Throw that out of there so you can see that I can actually increase the, the diameter of the, the pipe that's able to feed this bowl. So there's one on the top right here. And then there's also another one plumbed up on the bottom. So I'm actually gonna take both of these out and I'm gonna bring an inch and a half MPT in here throw a little bit of silicone on the front threads, thread that sucker in there, and then attach it to this inch and a half flex PVC. It's gonna fall into this bowl, which will actually be plugged, overflowing again down into the reservoir. So we're gonna pump a little bit more water through this. You also notice that there's this silicone plug in here that allows you to feed a light up into the top of this bowl, which is another really neat feature that we added when we uh, redesigned these bowls. So what happens is, is that light cord goes fits down into there clamps around it and then the silicone plug simply goes into that hole right there so again guys we're going to put a bead of silicone around the top threads so that as we thread this in that silicone will actually push back now this is a tapered thread so it's going to get tighter as we tighten it and sometimes it won't always thread all the way in so don't be nervous if that doesn't happen you just want to be sure not to cross thread this what we're going to do next is glue this socket glue the end of the pipe, attach it to, and then we'll set it in place and get the sandbag filled. This is what I was thinking to put, you know, over in that one spot okay. over there. All right. This one, like once it's out of the box, mm -hmm. it's huge. It is. So the biggest thing we got to be careful of is the splash that yeah. comes off of it. Uh -huh. I think what I like about these though so much more than the urn is the shape of it really lets that water hug to it yeah. a lot faster so you don't get nearly the splash that the urn gives you. Because like, it does that kind yeah. of... I know exactly you want it. Just... Hey, oh wait, wait. Do you want to build a snowman? Do you want to come and play? I don't think that anyone. <laughs> We're starting to finish up Fact Slate Sphere collection. Turn the camera on and show you kind of what we do on the inside of this, okay? A couple things. We have a light plumbed in here. We drilled a hole right there so that we could get one of our one lot spotlights brought through um, and then board this out a little bit bigger. I think it's a 
three quarter inch hole that we bored out to about an inch and a quarter so we could fit our one inch pipe in through here. I want to put a little bit of weight inside this thing so that as we're backfilling around it and doing our edge treatments and that kind of stuff, this thing's not going to shift back and forth. This will end up coming in up through that hole. When I flip it over, kind of step back and give you a, a glimpse of what it's going to look like. We've got a boulder cut into the to this wall somewhat. That uh, course of brick that we initially laid actually ended up as a good. So Juan's going to start finishing up the coping stone around this bowl and he's going to end up coming this way and meeting up with that rock and kind of see what that, that finished coping stone looks like right there. Here's that light plug that we talked about earlier in the video with one of our one watt puck lights or waterfall lights set in here as well. So that'll illuminate this entire bowl. So we've got one in all three bowls. We'll put some one watt spotlights out here shining back on these things, highlighting the exterior of the feature as well as illuminating the top part. Oh, hey, Hefe. But Chris, literally how cool would it look if we had frames made for these where we could float, make them look like they're floating out in water. Yep. So it'd be some kind of like steel frame or I, I don't know. So I think that's why um, both of us like this job. I've been doing it for a long time and we're still super inspired to be creative, not knowing where it's going to go, you know? A really important technique. You know, I guess rule that, that you made us all follow at the end of every job, we critique and say, what would we do differently? Not that we didn't necessarily like something. And then those conversations evolve into a product like this. And then our product team does a fantastic job always coming out with new products. Okay, so we have the plumbing for the spheres done. Nick and Juan are finishing up the coping stone on that wall over there. So Nick and I worked on the plumbing here. This is what I was talking about with the uh, the light. And then we've got our stub of one inch pipe. Basically the finished product down in there for the three spheres. Here's the one inch lines running from their respective fountain scapes. And then we put a valve box in. Uh, to hide our manifold and make it easily accessible. So you can see the ball valves in there and that is being fed inch and a half line Comes out this side of the valve box. We have our pump housed inside the aqua block We're not gonna do just gravel in throughout this entire thing. We're gonna make a, like a mossy area We're gonna take out a few aqua blocks uh, throw some sand in here and do some plants So this thing will be up and running this afternoon. I can't wait to show you sitting in my soon to be renovated office slash design center. He's ready now for me to see the unveiling of the group of spheres. Let's take a look and see what it looks like. Oh my, oh my, oh my. <laughs> it looks so freaking awesome. I actually think even you as a permanent part of this feature would work. <laughs> Just, I love those things. You almost want to go up to them and hug them. <laughs> I love how you put um, the lights up in the top of each one of these. I mean, that's a very custom thing to do. Yeah. It makes it look like there's a flame on them all the time. Not that you couldn't use the flame attachment. Where is that thing? This guy right here just nestles down inside. Then you just light this section and you actually get flame and water. And then look at these bowls. 100% my favorite part of the bowls is the way it disappears down into that hole. What's going on with that, with the foam? I think it's just our water. Oh, so it's just like a bunch of organics probably from the gravel and everything else, yep. causing that to all foam up. I know, why don't we grab, uh, why don't you grab some of that foam away stuff? We'll see if it works. Oh yeah. Hey Whitstock, what do you think? Oh. Wrong reaction, because <laughs> you know it's incredible. So you guys want to see some magic? Look how well merchandise Yes, is all of our huh? different water treatments. There's some foam away, a couple squirts. Oh my. It's crazy how fast that happens. Do it again, that? do it again. That's awesome. That's insane. Like whoever developed this stuff is genius. I probably had something to do with it. <laughs> oh. oh, do it again, do it again. That's awesome. Tell me what's your favorite part, Chris. I do think that pipe 
We may or may not have stole that idea from, what's his name, Jacques? J-A-A-K. What's up, everybody? It's Jack from Atlantis Water Gardens. Yeah, he's kind of smart. Check out his channel. He does that a lot, and that's one of my favorite things. It's just that disappearing water. There's no noise from it. These spillway bowls were designed to have a small one fall into a large one. Yep. Everything can be so customizable. Taking this one, dropping in that one, then seeing that big, giant veil come all the way down with this one, Kissing the other one, huh? You like that, didn't you? Only way to really 100% pull this bowl cut into the wall is to bring that liner up and behind the wall. Right, right. Otherwise, show them like that little bit of leaking that happens. See how that water dribbles back just a little bit? That little drip, drip, drip. There you go. There. Yep. We need to be able to catch that water. This whole section right here really helps divide the two features. Yep. So somebody can come and actually say, this is one, looking at this side, or spin around, and that is one. So Chris and the guys obviously did an incredible job. One of the things we changed on the fly was to move the spheres from over there to right here. And I love that, the way it pulls you in and then you just keep discovering. Every day we're doing custom different features and we wanna share that stuff with you. Hopefully you guys see this episode as a way to inspire you to do some different things indoors and or outdoors. If you like this stuff, make sure you hit like, comment, subscribe, and we'll keep doing it. Tell me what you think of the spheres, tell me what you think of those spillway bowls and uh, what you would do different or what creative ideas you've got because of the inspiration that we've given you guys. Can't wait to show you another one.